Hello, students. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So I hope you guys are doing fine. Uh, we were basically studying about uh, in our previous class. It was about business environment. So I made you explain what business environment about. What does it mean? What are various uh, you know types of business environment? We talked about internal business environment. We talked about external business environment. We even talked about subcategories under internal uh, subcategories under external business environment. So all of these uh, we studied in our previous few lectures. I feel like that would be clear to you, and uh, I want uh, I want to move further now with some new topic, which is basically the concept the concept of planning. So now we will understand the concept of planning in depth in our today's lecture and coming fourth lecture. We will be studying about some few other topics. So, particularly talking about today's lecture, so we will be studying about uh, planning, it, its introduction, its meaning, its importance, features, limitations, all the things about planning we will be studying in our today's lecture. So, we will be start. We will be starting with the very first and the basic thing, which is basically the introduction about planning. So just like management is a never ending activity, so is planning. In fact, businesses planning, business planning, in fact, business planning, it is one of the primary functions of management. It sets up the stage for all further functions of management, like organizing, directing, etc. Like we have studied that management never ends. You know, management is something which is continuous in its nature. I have made you exp made you the, explain this thing in the very first class when we were studying about management. That management never stops; it goes on and on and on, and it never ends until that particular organization, particular form comes to an end. So, planning is the same. Planning is something which has continuity in its nature. It is something which will never end until the organization ends. Planning is something that every department, every sub department needs. Nothing can be done without plans. When you plan, only then other things can be followed up. As explained here as well, that it is the first stage of management which gives rise or birth to organizing, directing, staffing, controlling, coordinating, and every other thing. It's the it's it's sort of a mother who gives the birth to every other further steps which are under management. So just now you after hearing this, you can make up the essence of my, uh, planning, how much importance it has, how much worthy it is. If planning is not there or planning stage is not done right, everything will be waste everything will not do good for the organization and if you only do this particular step do this particular stage very correctly or very finely the all other stages of the management will bring you much more success than you have ever expected because we see we say we say this thing now one if the first step is right the entire entire thing would be right it's just about the matter of first step if your first step is good is right is efficient is very uh, effective your entire process of management would will be very effective very smooth efficient and very prosperous so just give it all when an organization sorry when an organization plans it gives its all to the this to this particular step of planning. So now let us now try and understand more about meaning of planning. So it was a it was just a gist or an introduction about what planning is all about. Now we will study about the planning concept of planning in little detail. I'll first read out the slide for you guys and then I will try to understand you about its concept. So we already know what planning is. It is the deciding of what is to be done in advance. It is the groundwork for all future plans of the organization. 
planning bridges the gap between where the organization currently finds itself and where it wishes to be. So as explained in this particular para is that planning is something which you do prior, like in advance. It's not, it's not, it planning cannot be done in a way that first you did all your actions and now after completing your actions, you are planning out things. No, that wouldn't work. First, prior, plan down the things, jot down the things, make arrangements, make maps, make pie charts, make everything possible, which will, you know, help you do your actions better. Do everything possible that you can do so that your other stages are very prosperous. So planning is you doing everything, you jotting out, planning out things in advance. You are deciding what is to be done. You have to first decide what is to be done, only then you will, you know, you will be at a position of doing that. It's not just you took up the money and now you'll start up the business without thinking, without giving it a thought. The thought is very must. And that thought is what derives your business for the entire time. So this planning in advance, deciding in advance what is to be done, how is to be done, when is to be done, what all steps to be followed is very important. This will lead to good results, good revenues, good brand image, you know, uh, good monopoly in the market. This all will help in that. But if you don't do this, you know, do this particular st stage well in a good manner or efficiently, you will have to bear a cost throughout your management process. Moving forward, it states that so in essence of business planning, comprises of setting objectives for the organization and developing a plan of action to achieve these objectives. Once the objectives are set, the managers and workers can have a clear vision of what to work towards. So first, what is planning all about? I said to you that planning is deciding in advance what to do, how to do. So Along with deciding, you are also setting up some objectives for your organization. Objectives are basically set in the planning phase itself because planning is deciding in advance what is to be done. So this means that goal setting, objective settings will be done in this particular stage itself. So in planning stage, you are deciding your goals, your long-term objectives, short-term objectives, and only then you will be moving forward. So now planning also helps the entire organization to know actually what is to be done. Because in planning stage itself, you have basically formed your goals, short-term goals, long-term goals and stuff. So planning has a great sense here. Moving forward, now it states that managers are a very important part of function of business planning. Planning requires innovation, creativity, and multitasking from the managers. And planning is a function that managers of all levels must perform, that is upper, middle, and lower management. So if we talk about who does, man, uh, who does business planning, okay, who is basically responsible for business planning? So your subordinates, your foremen, or your workers cannot plan out things because they are not at that position, maybe not in terms of experience, maybe not in terms of qualification or skill set. They are not in the stage where they can plan out things, where they can do business planning. So for business planning, we have a particular set of people who do it or who perform it. And those set of people are basically called managers. So these are professional managers who basically perform things. Professional managers do every planning of the entire organization. They continuously plan out things. It's not that planning is a one-term one -term thing which is done today and it has been ended. It's, it does not sound like that. It's something which will continue time after time, you know, period after period and short intervals after intervals. So planning will be done in that particular way. So Planning is done in every organization, every subordinate, but particular set of people who are basically called managers perform this planning function. So planning from function are basically performed by, uh, you know, uh, 
performed by every level. So be it upper, be it lower, be it middle, but the person who is performing it should be a manager. So it's it's the difference only lies here that the person who will be performing the planning stuff is the ma manager. And this manager will convey this planning, the goals, the objectives, the short term one, long term ones to all the workers all the, or all the employees out there so that people, workers and the employees are aware about what is to be done. Because if they are not aware about what is to be done, there would be a, there would be a situation arise where everything would go chaotic and they will be not aware about what to be done next. So it's your planning stage because you set up goals, you set up objectives. So it's your planning stage which, which helps your managers to, which helps your managers to, which helps your workers and employees to know about now next what is to be done. So it's all, a, it's, it was all about a brief about planning. So I just want your confirmation guys, is the concept of planning clear before moving to the next topic related to planning? This one. So now let's move forward and try to understand the other things related to business planning. Now the next concept is importance of business planning. So what is the importance of business planning? Why is it important? Why, why generally companies perform business planning? There should be some sort of importance. That is the reason you know companies must be performing business plan. You know business planning. So there, the the importance basically are many. There are many importances, but we have tried to jot down some important importances of business planning, and we will be studying it one by one. So now let's move forward, and let's you know, let's understand what are the importances of business plan. Planning is an important function of management. It tells the manager where the organization should be headed. It also helps the organization reduce uncertainty. Let us take a look at some important functions of planning. So planning is basically important function of management because as, as I said you and explained you earlier that planning is like a mother who gives birth to all the stages, further stages in the management process. So if your planning is right, planning is good, every other stage will be definitely good. So the first importance that is of planning, business planning is planning provides a sense of direction. It states that planning means coming up with a predetermined action plan for the organization. It actually states in advance what and how the work is to be done. This helps provide the workers and managers with a sense of direction, a guidance in a way. Without planning, their actions would be uncoordinated and unorganized. Planning, why planning is important is because you need, because see, in organization, you need a direction. Like you should be well aware about in which direction you have to go, in which direction you have to work. That should be well known, well aware about. You should be well aware of, about this. It's not just the manager should know that. It's about the workers, the employees, and everybody out there should be well aware about what is to be done. They should be well versed that well well versed with this thing that which direction they should work in. If that direction is lost in any organization or any employee has no idea about the direction, it will create chaos. It will create chaos in the organization. So now, what planning does? Because in planning, managers sit down, think in advance how things will be done. How you know? What are the short-term goals? What are the long-term goals? What are the objectives of the organization? So it makes pretty. It makes this pretty clear that uh, because the direct now the goals are known, the objectives are known. So direction is direction is something which will come as uh, supplementary when the goals and the objectives are known, right? If you know that my goal is to become a doctor, how? How come not you will be aware about your direction? You will definitely be aware about your direction because you know I have to take science, I have to take bio, I have to take, uh, uh, you know, uh, take medicine as my subjects and then I have to, you know, give this entrance exam to clear this thing and this, that, that thing and finally I have to do MD or something else degree so as to become a successful doctor. 
So by this planning, which you made for yourself was to become a doctor, it was all the directions were very clear for you. You had a direction to work for. Similarly happens in the business as well, business as well. When the direction is known, when the goal is known, sorry, when the goal is known, when the objective is known, you are aware about the what aware about what direction it would be, right? You know which direction to go, either go left, right, straight, diagonal, horizontal, vertical, you know everything. But and your employees also do know it. Because see, lack of direction means that loss of uh, loss of time, energy, efforts. If your workers are well aware about the direction, it will not be a, be a loss of you know loss of the, uh, time, energy, and efforts. It will be definitely it will definitely be giving you good amount of revenues. So this was the first importance of business planning. I hope this is clear. Just give me a confirmation, guys, before moving forward. Yes, ma'am. The next importance of business planning is planning reduces uncertainty. Now it speaks that planning not only sets objectives, but also anticipates any future changes in the industry or the organization. So it allows the managers to prepare for these changes and allow them to deal with the uncertainties. Planning takes into consideration past events and trends and prepares the managers to deal with any uncertain events it's very sure that future is something which is really uncertain in nature and we all know that we as humans do not have any control over the future it's very sure but the thing is we know that future is something which is uncontrollable which is unpredictable which is uh, which is basically unpredictable we all know that future is unpredictable but through our study, through our analysis, we can at least make some assumptions, guesses, right? We can definitely do so. Assumptions and guesses can be made. And by making these assumptions and guesses, you can not, I'll not say that you can fully control the, control the environment or control the things out there, but at least you can you can have a little bit control over things because if you know, see, for example, our scientists, researchers, and other people, you know, go into depth analysis, study about various things, and they predict that maybe earthquake will come someday. So, for example, uh, this particular day, earthquake will come. How come, how, like, they are for sure that there could be chances of not coming earthquake. But at least if they have made predictions, they must be able to, they must be at a situation where they must have made some arrangements to uh, basically deal with that particular situation when earthquake will come. So by doing analysis, by doing trends, researches and other things, if you are not fully sure about what will be happening in future, at least you must be a little bit sure about some things and which you can control at that particular point of time. These all things can be already done if your planning is correct. If you do plan, if you plan out things, see, for example, uh, you know, where, for example, if you want, just a small example, if you want to be, become a doctor and you feel like uh, the exam that you gave uh, was not, you know, was not up to the mark or maybe there is a possibility you may not pass that exam. So now you have known this thing and you are aware about it. How are you aware about it that you will not pass in the exam? You must have done, done some analysis, must have checked uh, answer keys, must have gone through internet to scroll down the answers. So everything you did, was something which may which made you guess about this thing that you may not pass the exam. So maybe when the results come, you get passed. There is a probability, but still there is a probability you may not pass because you made an analysis. So for you making an analysis that you may not pass, you must have found something plan B in that particular time that if not this exam, let me go and give that exam. So as I should get something good. But if you do not do plan, 
plan at all so when the results will come and unfortunately you haven't passed there would arise a situation where nothing would be up to your hands and you will lose your career correct so this is how planning basically reduces uncertainty just give me a confirmation guys if it is, if it is clear to move to the next slide yes ma'am okay so moving to the next slide the third point is planning reduces wastefulness now what the, what does it mean planning reduces wastefulness the detailed plans made keep the detailed plans made keep in mind the needs of all the departments this ensures that all the departments are on the same page about the plan and that all their activities are coordinated there is a clarity in thought which leads to the clarity in action all the works all the work is carried out without interruptions or waste of time or resources so now the thing is if you plan well if you you know priorly decide everything and every stuff is priorly decide the waste the wastages or the wastefulness will decrease now how it will decrease see in the planning stage you are clear about your goals you are clear about your short term objectives your long term ob objectives everything is clear to you everybody has got a direction that which direction to go to what to perform to how to perform to what objective to be achieved by what individual which individual should do what and which manager should report to whom everything is clear now if everything is clear just because of planning everybody will do the tasks as per needed they will be clear about what processes to be followed what objectives to be achieved how the things to be done they would be clear about this thing so when they are clear about this thing there would be a situation where they will not make any mistake or they will not you know basically do any wrong thing or wrong action because that they are maybe there is a prob probability that they indulge into some wrong activity or they do a task in a in a in, in not in a right manner but the probability of doing tasks not in a right manner decreases probability is there that they do tasks in the right manner they perform everything as per needed because everything is you know conveyed or communicated to them priorly they know everything prior which is only possible when managers have have full fledgedly performed the planning function now because they performed the planning function full fledgedly that is the reason why the decrease in wastefulness has arrived the waste decrease in wastefulness arrived because planning was done very correctly very smoothly everything was done very in a very good manner and very good stuff so that is the reason why the wastefulness has decreased has really come up in a it come up to a very small quantity because now everybody is clear about what is to be performed everybody is well aware, aware about the goals objectives what to be performed how to be performed everybody knows this so of course why will be the mistakes made by them correct Mis mistakes will be avoided by the candidates by the employees because of this particular reason correct so this is the third importance of why what is the importance of plan which states that reduction is wasteful reduction on wastefulness is the essence of plan just give me a clear clarification if this thing is clear yes ma'am oh let's move to the next move now to the next point which is planning invokes innovation planning actually involves a lot of innovation on the part of the managers being the first function of management it is very difficult activity it encourages the manager to broaden their horizons and forces them to forces them to think differently so the managers have to be creative perceptive 
and innovators. Planning invokes innovation. See, planning is done by managers. Managers do planning and it's the responsibility of managers. But when managers perform planning, it's not planning is something which needs a lot of creativity, a lot of attention, a lot of discipline. Only then planning will be performed. And the main and the you know foremost thing that planning needs is innovation, creativity. Because when you plan, you need new ideas, you need new things that that you can perform. Every every possible action like has some alternative, uh, which ha has some better advantages. See, if every there is one goal and multiple ways are to achieve that particular goal. And pl what planning does, planning basically helps you find out the best possible action which you can take to basically achieve that particular goal or objective. If citing a very small example, you want a secure career, you want a good job with a good salary. So you have multiple ways of doing that. Now the multiple ways can be you going for some uh, professional degrees like MBAs, engineering to be at a stage where you can grab a good job and then earn well. Next option is that you become a successful doctor. Next, next option is you become a successful teacher. Next is you go for some government public exams. So to be a public administrative officer, you have multiple ways to achieve this particular objective of being secure, getting a job, good salaried job. You have multiple ways. Now, while planning, you need to be creative. You need to find out some innovative ideas of performing any action to achieve that objective. Your creative idea could be you going for, uh, you know, you going for some entrance exams, which will help you clear administrative exam, administrative job. So your creativity lies here in how creative you can make your the studying time and how creatively you can indulge into study so as to grab the opportunity of giving exam and getting the job. You have to be creative enough. If you're not creative, if you are uh, if you are like following a laid back approach or a monotonous way of getting a job, it will not help. Maybe it will help, but it maybe it'll take a lot of time, a lot of energy, a lot of efforts. But what management teaches us is that we should be able to do tasks in the best possible manner, reducing our wastages, which can be energy, time, efforts, money. So you have to find out the best possible manner in which you can achieve that particular objective. That is only possible when you will be creative and innovative enough to do that. So it evokes planning basically evokes innovation in the managers when they come up with new ideas creative ideas which will help which will fortunately help them to basically achieve that particular objective i hope this point is clear guys if you give me a clarification i can move to the next point is it clear yes Yes, so now if the previous point was clear, we come here to our fifth point of importance of uh, business planning, which states that makes decision, makes decision is equal to making easier. Now, what does it mean? In business planning, the goals of the organization have been set, an action plan developed, and even predictions have been made for future events. This makes it easier for all the managers across all levels to make decisions with some ease. <laughs> the decision making process also becomes faster. It speaks that I made you understand when you do planning, you basically set up some goals, some short term and long term objectives for your organization. And once everything is set, you have a proper plan, you have a proper game plan. Uh, which is developed for your organization of how the objectives or how the goals can be achieved. Moreover, in the planning stage, I said you, you predict things. And how I'm again saying that 
hundred percent prediction is not possible. What is possible is like making some sort of assumptions, little bit assumptions. That is possible. You don't expect that you will get hundred percent predictions right, but you have made some sort of predictions for your future events of an organization. Now, as goals are clear, objectives are clear, a proper game plan is there, proper predictions are there. It's it's really easy for all the managers now to make decisions. Be it any decision related to any aspect of the organization, be it finance, HR, or advertisement sales, or any other important decision. Because of planning, now planning is done, and planning has made the other things, which is basically the decision making, very easy. So you, your decision making is very easy as a manager when everything is known to you, every aspect is clear to you. Because of this particular planning stage, you will be at a position to make good decisions and a better decisions. So you, not you will not take a long time to make any decision just because you are well aware about everything that is happening around you. Uh, you are no, you are well aware, aware about what goals are to be achieved, what objectives are to be achieved. You have idea about what could happen in future. You have an idea about what uh, you know, uh, what kind of plan is developed by the organization. Everything is clear to you now. The only thing you have to do is decision making. So when everything is clear to you, you will make quick and faster and good and good decisions, and you will not. Create any confusion for yourself while making those right. So that is again an importance of business planning. I hope this is clear. If this is clear, then I will be moving to the next point. Um, okay. Now, when this point is clear, let's move to the next point, which states that establishes standards. Now, what does this sixth point mean? That establishes standards. Once the business planning is done, the managers now have set goals and standards. This provides the manager standards against which they can measure actual performances. This will help the organization measure if the goals have been met or not. So planning is a prerequisite to control. What does it mean? What, what do we actually mean by establishing standards is that when we have done planning, Planning is done, goals are made, objectives are clear, game plan is sorted. Uh, planning explains us everything. Like planning also explains us that what a particular employee has to do, how to do, what steps to be followed for doing that, what is expected out of him, what standards are there for him. And when these all things are clear, the manager gets a standard, a standard point against which is basically taken as a reference, taken as a reference point against which the actual performances could be measured. Now, I will give you here a very simple example. Say it's a small organization of six people, um, five to six people, and the work they are doing is of selling insurances to the customers. Now it's a very small organization. Maybe there are only uh, five people who are handling the sales. Like they are doing sales for the company. Now the uh, now the company has decided uh, to basically sell 30, 30 sales insurance, 30 insurances in this particular month. This was only this 30 number was decided in the planning stage itself. Of course, it will be uh, decided in the planning stage itself. Because I said to you that planning helps you basically make your goals, make your objectives. So this 30 was the target which is set in the planning stage. Now, because this 30 was the target which was uh, you know planned or which was set in the in the bids in the planning stage itself, it's very clear if there are six salespersons, five insurances are to be sold by every salesperson. Now what planning has done planning has basically made the manager realize about the standards for the employees the manager knows that five insurances are to be sold by everybody the standard is set now the standard is five now what a manager will do after a month when the month has end basically 
uh, the salesperson have done their jobs and at the end we find that the six these six people have sold some insurances maybe the person a has sold uh, five maybe the person b has sold six maybe a person c has just sold two now you know the reference point against which you can measure their performances and that reference point is five so the person who has sold just two insurances for this particular month you know that he has not performed really well so you will uh, be aware about that maybe he needs some sort of training or maybe he we have already given him good amount of training but he is not actually able to perform good so in that scenario you will maybe you know lay off that employee and the employee who has sold like six insurances you know the target and the standard was five you know that he has performed beyond expectations beyond the standards which are set which were set for him you can also provide him with bonuses for his better performance but how was it possible it was only possible when there were some sort of standards in your mind uh, standards which were set in the planning stage now of course these standards were set in the planning stage itself and because of this planning stage you are aware about the various standards for all the employees and it's acting as a reference point for you to measure or uh, cross check the performances of the employees it's not about the employees just not about the employees i'm just giving you an hypothetical example so as you get understand understood about this concept it could be about the department it could be about the a uh, sub division it could be the standards could be for anybody like for the entire organization also there could be some standards for sub divisions also there could be some standards standards could be set for anybody right so this is the uh, again one of the good importance of business planning i would say so i hope this one is clear before moving forward just give me a confirmation if all the importances are clear because now we will moving be moving to the next topic which is basically the limitations of planning is it clear yes so now we are done with one thing which was importance of planning now we are moving forward and trying to understand about a new concept which is limitations of planning so with every good thing there is some sort of disadvantage which is always there we have to get aware about this disadvantages as well so as i said a lot good about planning something bad also lies there but undoubtedly without planning nothing could be done but you should be well aware about about various limit oh. sorry no sorry ma'am no something happened okay 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 no issue just move yourself so uh, of course planning is something which is very important and without planning you will not be able to do anything but apart from that you should be also clear about what sort of limitations are there of planning what sort of disadvantages are are of the planning which you have to really understand so now we will be trying we will be now trying to understand about the limitations of planning so if we start with the slide it states that while business planning is very important and a requisite for every organization it does have some limitations let us take a look at some limitations of business plan so again the limitations of business planning are are huge in number like maybe not that huge as importances are but at least there are there are few disadvantages of planning but i have tried to jot down the main limitations of planning now let's understand them one by one the first one talks about rigidity now let's understand what does it explain to us once the planning function is complete and the action plan is set then the member tends to only follow the plan the manager may not be in a position to change the plan according to circumstances or the manager may be unwilling to change the plan the sort this sort of rigidity is not ideal for an organization see when plans are set plans are made there arises a situation when a uh, like game plan is for example the game plan has been made the entire planning stage has been completed now you have took like a months to plan everything now what happens 
like if everything is like sorted, planning is done, everything is done, plan, you have planned out everything. There arises a stage where it gets difficult to change the plans. Because see, if you have to change even a little bit of the task, maybe you have to change 10 multiple tasks related to this little bit, the this little small task. The change becomes very difficult. The flexibility is very difficult because you have made a plan. See, just I will give you an example of uh, be things before COVID. Nobody knew that COVID will come. Nobody was aware about it. Neither, uh, neither was I, nor were you, nor the businesses. It was something which was totally unexpected. So now if, for example, an organization, maybe, for example, XYZ startup tried to come up in the market before COVID, just a few months before COVID. So they must have indulged themselves into two to three months of uh, planning of how to come up into the market and the plan they were making were of totally coming up with the physical, like physical retail outlets or physical stuff. Now suddenly they just started and suddenly COVID hit. Now for that particular organization, it was next to impossible to again start off all the things from scratch. It was really difficult. It would be really difficult for such an organization if there would be, has, would be a situation like this. It was, it is totally, it is a total, totally hypothetical example, guys. So just imagine they may, like they may not be at a situation where they can change their plans from scratch now. They have already made so much plans, invested so much time, money, maybe efforts, everything. Now to change everything is not possible. So maybe they either drop off this idea or maybe they, uh, you know, sell their assets and uh, just to try to cover their expenses and all. And that's it. Because everything was done, how come we can change everything now from scratch? Huh? We have lost so much energy, time and revenue in that, correct? So this was the first limitation of planning. Is it clear? Is it clear, guys? Yes, ma'am. Let's now move to the second limitation of planning. Now, what is the second limitation of planning? It is that not ideal in dynamic conditions. In an economic environment, rarely anything is stagnant or static. Economic, political, environmental, legal conditions keep changing. In such a dynamic environment, it becomes challenging to predict future changes. And if a manager cannot forecast accurately, the plan may fail. Planning suits there when an organization knows that things are going to be started for at least a while. An environment and market with a lot of dynamism or a, if a market or in an environment is very much dynamic in nature, planning is, not, planning is something which really don't work there. Planning is something which will not work there. You don't need to plan when the organ, when the environment or the market or the industry where you are working is really dynamic in nature. In that situation, the decisions that are to be taken should be should be like uh, at that particular point. Like if a particular thing has changed, just take the decision. From decision should be made. Planning is not planning is a thing, but planning is a game which will not work there. So if a, if a situation, if a market or if an industry or an environment is which is particularly dynamic in nature, planning will not work there and it is a limitation for planning. Because I explained in the previous point, it's rigid in nature. Planning is something which is rigid, rigid in nature. You cannot make plans and change it abruptly. You have to make plans and then stick by it at least for some time so that you get some revenue and then again invest those revenue in planning and change your actions but something which is very dynamic in nature and you sitting and planning there would not make any sense. It is like, it's something which is foolish in nature you will be doing there. Planning is something which is very non-serious thing which, which will be done in a dynamic environment. So avoid planning in dynamic conditions. So it's an, again a limitation of planning because <clears throat> it is not, <clears throat> companies, are not companies are not able to perform planning in dynamic conditions, correct? Is it clear? 
sorry. Is it clear? <laughs> yes, ma'am. So the next one is, next innovation is planning can also reduce creativity. Now, how does, how, how this can happen? While making a plan, creativity after, uh, while making a plan, plan takes creativity after that managers blindly follow the plan. They do not change the plan according to the dynamic nature of the business. Sometimes they do not even make the appropriate suggestions to upper management. The work becomes routine. I said you uh, in the importance is that planning, however, evokes or involves innovation and creativity, but that's, that's limited to when you are planning out things. After you have made a plan, everything is done, you know the game plan and everything is sorted. It becomes something monotonous. It becomes something routine. You have to follow it blindly. Because as I said, you planning is something which is rigid in nature. You cannot change that every then and now. You have made the plan, now stick, stick to it, stick by it, okay? You cannot change it. So when you know that planning cannot be changed, you have to follow a routine work. It, it is just like a 96 office thing, which you have to follow. It re reduces creativity. Because if the, if the environment is dynamic, you cannot still change because you have to stick by some plan. It will fortunately, it will unfortunately reduce the creativity to a very good extent. So planning, of course, reduces a lot of creativity for organizations out there. Correct? Is it clear? Yes. The next one is planning is expensive. Planning is a cost-consuming process. Since it is an intellectual and creative process, specialized professionals must be hired for the job. Also, it involves a lot of research and fact collections and numbers crunching. At certain times, the cost of planning process can outweigh its benefits. Planning is something which is expensive. It's not, guys, it's not something which is free of cost in nature, guys. It's something which is which is very much expensive. As I said to you that planning is not a job for everybody. It's something which can on, it is something which can only be done by professionals, maybe qualified MBAs, maybe qualified managers, maybe skilled employees, maybe people from good experience and a good background are to be hired to perform the planning task. Planning cannot be performed by everybody. So an organization must have to hire professionals for it. They must have to pay them good salaries for performing the planning function. So how come it is free for a company? It is really cost consuming process. You have to, an organization has to pay a lot of salaries to people out there now for doing planning. A lot of resources have to be made that involves cost, right? So planning is expensive in nature. Is it clear? Yes. With this, we come to the last limitation of planning, which will also uh, mark as a mark as complete completion of today's lecture, which states that not completely accurate. When planning, we have to forecast the future and predict certain upcoming events in the organization and the industry. So, of course, there can be hundred percent certainty in such cases. There cannot be hundred percent certainty in such cases so it can be said that business planning lacks accuracy as i said you in the very beginning that future is something which is totally unpredictable totally unpredictable like of course you can do some analysis you can get some results out of it and forecast a little bit but accurately forecasting things is which is next day impossible even big scientists and all of that stuff are not able to forecast things 100% accurate. So it, planning lacks accuracy. If you must be thinking that in future something will happen, maybe there is a probability that will not happen. In such a scenario, you must be at a position of losing, right? Losing a great amount of cost, revenue, and uh, finances for your company. So don't just rely on uh, planning 100%. So it has some sort of limitations that it is not accurate. You cannot just rely and uh, trust the planning 
uh, completely or blindly because things change. Future is unpredictable. You must have thought in advance of what do, what to do, but maybe maybe 